You're dealing with ALS, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and let me ask you this, Paul. The um, the pointers I'm hoping to give you as to where you might go with EFT and this kind of thing might also be useful for other people. Is it okay if I put the recording on my website or other things if others could benefit from it? Absolutely, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so, so you're dealing with ALS. Uh, uh, remind me again, you sent me an email about this, but remind me again, when did it start? It started, well, apparently, they reckon it started about 2014. And then I started uh, getting some muscle atrophy in my left arm. <clears throat> and then I went to a specialist uh, in about July of that year. And it took him to... I'm oh, sorry. I, I went to a specialist 2015. It took him to 2016, March 2016, to um, actually diagnose me. Because it was, they weren't sure whether I had degenerative spine disease or uh, ALS. Okay. Turns out I've got both. Apparently. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> so this is. It started in 2014. This is now March of 2018. So it's been the better part of four years from when it started. And so it has progressed currently. You cannot feed or dress yourself currently. Okay. Oh. All right. Now, um, <laughs> let, let me also ask you, Paul, just so I have a picture here. What is your exposure to date to EFT? Are you a newcomer at it? Have you been practicing it for a while or what? No, I've uh, started, it must have been about 2002 or something, with uh, Helen Walker. 2002? Yeah, with Helen Walker. With Helen Walker, okay. Yeah, and uh, I, was, I was very active at it for quite a while, but uh, I got like a lot of people I got in the habit of uh, doing an EFT for quite a few years. And uh, I started uh, getting some sessions with a woman called Adette. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, so I've had about four or five sessions with Adette, but I don't seem to be progressing. In any way. Okay. All right. I don't know. If I'm missing the point somewhere. Well, okay. Odette, I happen to know. Odette has has good, solid training in this, much more so than than <laughs> most. Okay. So. She's coming on Sunday. She's coming to your to you on Sunday. And the. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want, if you want, you can ask her to, if she wants to compare notes with me, uh, ask her to give me a Skype and we'll talk about it and, and so on. But um, when you were dealing with Odette, um, were you using the tapping form of EFT or were you, were you using our unseen therapist? <coughs> She was tapping. She was tapping? Yeah. She would tap for you? Yeah. Okay. So you didn't use the unseen therapist? No, as far as I know, no. Do you know what the unseen therapist is? Yeah, I've, I've read it, but I'm not sure I actually understand it. Okay. Have you, I've written a free ebook on it. Do you have that? Yes. Or you do? Have you read it or just skimmed it or? Yeah, well, I've not just skimmed it. I've read it, but not in, not in great detail. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I found it was, I don't know, it was 
uh, above me, I think. So I felt. Okay. All right. So, so let me let me ask you this: um, from a <laughs> spiritual point of view, do you have yourself a spiritual path, a religious path? Do you not have any of it? Uh, where are you on that? Well, I'm not a religious person. Um, I would call myself a spiritual person. I believe there's a there's a force greater than us. But I wouldn't say there was a particular God. Okay. All right. So, with that in mind, let me ask you this question. Okay. <clears throat> if this spiritual force was whether you call it God or I, I don't care what name you give it, okay? This higher power, this spiritual force, if it was present right now in this conversation, like if I was in your living room and so was the spiritual force, okay? Could that higher power um, fix, cure your ALS? Yeah. Oh, it could. Okay, good. I, was just, see, I, I believe, I believe that um, there is a cure for this. Okay. I don't believe it's incurable, but it's, it's what it is. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it, is it I mean, I mean, I've, I've got all your DVDs from the past, and uh, I believe that there is a lot of stuff. It's caused by emotions, mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, definitely, and at the end of the day we're all energy, so I don't see why, you know, why I can't, can't cure. Okay. Can't be cured. All right, so, well, with that in mind, let me, let me talk a little bit, uh, and again, we're recording this so you can hear it, you don't have to memorize it because you're you'll have a recording of it, okay? Um, I, too, believe there is a cure for it, okay? Now, I, it is challenging for me to believe that um, a man-made man method, such as medicine, for example, is a man-made medicine, um, is likely to have a cure for it okay. now that doesn't mean they can't help it that you know things like that um, but basically what they do is is um, use all the technology and they have a lot of technology at their fingertips to assist you with your symptoms okay now EFT aims at the causes and you hit I think the nail on the head well when you said there are emotional causes, unresolved emotional stuff. Okay. So, with the tapping form of EFT, um, the basic idea is to discover, to identify what these emotional issues are. They tend to be specific events, and I gather you've done that kind of work so far with Odette. Would I be correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're, we're, we're trailing through um, my younger days, you know, my youth, and uh, trying to tidy some stuff up. I didn't hear the last part. Try, younger days and trying to what? Tidy some stuff up. Okay. Tidy. Okay. So, all right. So, one of the challenges here is that Odette, who de who has some skills in this area, okay, has to play detective with you and start bringing these things up. Now, some of these things are hidden, even from you. They are forgotten. Or, the, or maybe they have been so traumatic or so guilt-ridden or you know, all this stuff that humans do that you have repressed it or you don't want to look at it. 
I don't know the specifics, but those would be possibilities here. Okay. And so sometimes the detective work falls a bit short because we're not able to really get find what is there and it takes time to start digging these things up. Okay. Now, our unseen therapist is another name for your spiritual force. Okay. If you, I'm going to urge you to read the book again, digest it, etc. Um, um, when it talks about the unseen therapist, it it points out that it is very non-denominational. Um, some people are Christian oriented, and so they might want to call uh, the unseen therapist Jesus. Or they may want to call it spirit or Holy Spirit or God. You know, things that fit within their particular religion. Others may want to call it Buddha or Allah. Okay. None of that matters what you call it. We call it unseen therapist. We call it we call it a she because she women are tend to be more softer than men, <laughs> you know, more gentle. <laughs> But therein lies this power, and it is a set of, it contains a wisdom that is well beyond your and my and Odette's ability to, um, I mean, to understand, okay? It's beyond, it's at a different level altogether. And we are now developing ways where you and Odette and others who are working with the unseen therapist, and she's very familiar with the unseen therapist. I don't know why she hasn't used it with you yet. Um, but um, where we can call on the unseen therapist, we can ask that spiritual dimension, what's really going on here? What haven't we put on the table yet? What is hidden from us? What is repressed? What is forgotten? You know. Now that takes some skill. It takes some practice. Um, and you won't always be right the first time. It may take several tries, etc. But there is a source of doing that which is very, very important. And in me, it may well be critical to you getting your cure because we've got to find the cause okay now there's some likelihood that this cause revolves around some form of either resentment or resentments angers at people that you haven't let go let go of for whatever reason um, or and or Guilt. All of us, without exception, would love to turn back the clock and redo a few of our behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody immune from that, myself included, okay? So when we carry around guilts, angers, resentments, they, even if we've forgotten them or we've think we've just done away with them and we don't bother with them anymore. They're still in the system, seething in the system, causing, for lack of a better term, negative chemistry, which shows up physically. For some people, it shows up as headaches or back pain or cancer or rheumatoid arthritis or ALS or Okay, how it shows up physically varies from person to person and so on. Okay. So the real issue here, at least from an EFT point of view, is um, how are we going to find, how can we find the real issue involved? And now we have some help. Um, if uh, if Odette 
is not familiar with this yet, uh, ask her to look at my webinar number 41. In fact, if I think about it, even though even though this is it's supposed to be for our members, I will send you a link. Yeah, I, I can send you a link to that one specific webinar where I talk to people about how to do this thing. Okay. Okay. Now, in fact, let me let me make a note of that, Paul, or I'll, I'll probably forget it. Um, see, Paul, recording, and number 41. Okay. At least I think it's 41. If it's not 41, I'll send you the right one. Okay. Um, so let me let me ask you. I, this is the kind of question I'm sure Odette has asked you, but just for my understanding of it, um, if there was an emotional reason why you are dealing with ALS and have all your symptoms, what would it be? Well, I was definitely, I was definitely known for my anger. I was a very angry man, and I, I, do, I do, I do have a lot of resentment as well. Um, you see, uh, I'll, try, I'll cut a long story short. When I was young, um, my mum had me when she was forty-two. She. She was from a strong Catholic background. My dad was a divorced man. So our sisters disowned her, basically. When she had me, she almost died. So then they started speaking to her again. And she kind of did anything to stay in their favor. And one, one of the aunts had two daughters. And every now and again, <clears throat> Excuse me. My mum would say things like, I wish I had two girls. I could have two girls up there. And always talk down to us. And we were just two daft boys, me and my brother. Okay. And we, weren't, we didn't get any attention or much affection. So, you know, we were, didn't have a good, happy life as such. It wasn't terrible. It was enough to make us better. Well, okay. The word terrible <clears throat> is a value judgment. I mean, terrible can go on a scale of things, okay? But what's important here is that it's not really what happened. It's not what your mother did and what your mother said and all of that, although it seems that way. What is important here is not what happened, what your mother did, said, and so on, but rather your response to it. What did you do with that? Okay, and if if that brings up anger and resentment, which was a very, it's a very natural, understandable, human thing that we do. Okay, however, if we carry on with it and keep it around, it is constantly having, even if we're not consciously aware of it, it is constantly having its effect. We are, we are not at peace, okay? And so what has to happen is that we have to end up with a form of genuine forgiveness, like it's a way to truly understand where your mother was coming from. That doesn't mean you have to condone it. It doesn't mean you have to support it. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it, okay? But it does mean if you're going to get peace on this yourself and hence have that contribute to the cure of your symptoms, all right? If you're going to have peace on it, you're going to have to have a quality level of forgiveness. Now. Forgiveness um, is also another interesting word. And ultimately, forgiveness means 
It is so forgiven you don't even remember it. Okay. Now, that may be a little challenging for us. Okay. <laughs> um, so, let me explore with you another level of that, a sort of stepping stone beginner's type level with that, and that's to understand your mother's behavior and your mother's comments and so on. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. as far as you know, um, what kind of, I mean, was your mother rejected, abused, or this kind of something like this during her childhood? No, as far as I, I'm aware from the story she told me, but she was definitely rejected and when she started dating my, 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 my dad, she was, uh, she was thrown out, she even uh, threw her clothes in the street, called the police on her when she came to pick her mum. You know, very, very bad. And this is for, from supposed good Christians. But okay. See, the thing is, Gary, ah, well, obviously on a conscious level, I am, I don't hold a grudge against my mum. You know, obviously I, I don't condone what she did, but, you know, in my older years, I decided to understand why she did it. So you do she understand, tried. you do understand why? Yeah, she was just trying to stay in favour for, for me with the sisters. Yeah, okay. And would need to do that, you know, to make herself complete or whatever terms you want to, to give herself some peace and, and this kind of thing. So, um, so the example I gave may not have fit directly. However, your mother's behavior, well, you understand your mother's behavior, okay? So, so, so you're, you're at an understanding level. Well, there's another level from understanding to, you know, complete forgiveness. And, and so, and there are some resentments and so on. So, even though you understand, you still resent it because you don't like what happened. Oh. <clears throat> she should have, uh, she should have had more respect for us. Stood up for us more. Okay. All right. Now, yes, and perhaps anybody objective looking at this would agree with you. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if you'll listen to your words, what you're saying is she should have had more respect for us. Okay. That is your response to what she was doing. Okay. Even though she had her own reasons that you can understand, okay, she still should have had more respect. Therefore, I resent that. That's still your response, okay? And that's also imposing, if you will, your rules on how she should behave. Okay. That's not to say your rules are wrong, but it is you saying, ah, this is my response, I'm wrong, I mean, I'm right, she's wrong, I resent, okay? And that resentment, that anger, can be expensive, as you may well be ex experiencing. Yes, so far? Yep, yep. Okay. So, mm -mm. I, can't, I can't be exhaustive here, Paul. Um, so I'm trying to point you in directions okay and and your your partner who's not here now uh, when she comes she just, home she just came in okay well <clears throat> you can have her watch this recording as well and she may be able to help you remember some things that there need to be looked at and so on okay uh, I would but Paul I would also and we don't have to put that on this on this recording but I would also look at, at guilt things, you know, think, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, okay? Or I wish I'd have done something differently. Because that, that 
can really start eating at you, even though you're not aware of how it does that. Okay. Yeah, well, see, I've, uh, I've been married and divorced twice, and both, both uh, divorces were entirely my fault. You know, I, was, I wasn't a very good person. I didn't hit anybody. Um, but I was uh, always aggressive, an angry man. Okay. Just angry. Well, okay. You know, so there's anger and and resentment coming up again, and and when you carry when any of us carry this is not just you, Paul. When any of us carries this around, and we all carry some form of that around, okay, it's impossible to go through decades and decades and decades of life and not collect some of that, okay. So, but the angry man at least from an EFT point of view, is paying for it with ALS symptoms. Okay. So, um, again, I would go back to my book, and it, while it may have been over your head to begin with, I would stop, and I would, I would digest you know, each chapter, and so on, and there are... There are um, uh, exercises called the personal peace procedure near the end and Odette is familiar with all of this <laughs> okay yeah but I would point you in that direction um, I, what I'm trying to point out is ways to identify the true issues the true causes okay and then the way to take care of those is is um, more powerfully the unseen therapist, rather than mechanically tapping on some meridians. Okay, all right. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, do you have any other questions or anything? I, was, uh, I thought um, I, was, I tried the unseen therapist. Am I right in saying that you get yourself in a relaxed state and then you call for the unseen therapist to come forward? Is cause I tried that. Maybe obviously I wasn't doing it right. Well, it's a little more detailed than that, and and that that is described in more detail in the book. So I would ask you to, and when you get to that point, I mean, they, it talks about specific events which you're already familiar with. Okay, but that's a very important piece of it. it gives you some phases to go all of this it's it's all there and and i would um, urge you to ask uh, odette to shift towards that because she's been using i know with other clients uh, uh and, and to get a hold of me if she has any questions so you, you definitely think it's it's as early as that the problem it wouldn't be like um, the year before I started. I was uh, when I was trying to get back in a relationship with my current partner. We used to see each other before, and um, I was insanely jealous because she didn't want a relationship at the time, and uh, it almost sent me off the head. Jealousy and, you know, it's crazy. Cause even some of my friends were saying, I'm starting to lose the plot. But would the damage have been done before that? Yeah, okay. Well, all right. All of this properly done, all that anger and related things can shift to peace. And, and uh, I would expect the more peace you get, the less reason there is for the ALS symptoms. That's, that's the general and simple point. Okay. What's interesting, Paul, and I'll just, I'll just give you this final seed, if you will, is that you may find that as you start unloading 
this anger, you may find something happened. That is, you may not want to unload it. You may want to keep it. And that's something you have to really look at. There's, see, see, if you think about it, we can um, uh, justify our anger um, by saying to ourselves, you know, if I let go of this anger, I'm going to let my mother or somebody else off the hook, okay? <laughs> And I really want, I have a need to beat them up in my mind. I have a need to do that, okay? And letting go of that need, sometimes that need becomes part of our identity. It's part of who we are. And to really get peace on it is, is, is like letting go of a part of who we believe, anyway, that we are. So I would just point out that resistance to you. Uh, so you're aware of it and ask unseen therapists to take care of that resistance but that resistance is likely to be there so be aware of it thanks guy okay all right paul i will send you this information i'll send you this recording uh i wish you well god bless you a big hug for you okay right. thank you so much for talking to me guy all right paul it's been a pleasure to see you okay bye, bye. Take care.